All right, we've got a great show for you tonight, so please um, help me welcome your first comic to the stage. He's a very funny guy. You've seen him all over town. Shut the fuck up. Um, please put your hands together for Chris Putro. Nice. I, you know, I had a joke about, it was a joke about Gabrielle Giffords coming out to entrance music and about CM Punk and called a personality, but obviously I can't do it now. You stepped right on my punchline there. But I appreciate the edge, though. Uh, thank you, Daniel Stewart. Thank you, Brian Monarch. And thank you, Sardos, for having us here. Where's where's the guy from the website? Is he the owner? The, uh, I think I saw him around here before. Seymour, Seymour. Thanks for having us here. I see you on the website, you're like in a little miniature version. It's kind of creepy to see you like full size. You, you kind of remind me of like the six foot Yoda on Hollywood Boulevard. I don't know if you've seen that guy. Uh, well, I guess the only midget performer is playing Chucky. Who freaks me out too because he has a Chucky doll too. I work there. These are all inside references. Uh, so what am I going to talk about? Oh, hey, uh, there's this new Just for Men commercial out, which I like. You know, like this whole series. It's just the series of commercials for the Just for Men, the hair coloring product. Uh, and they're all like funny and cute. Though one of the ones I like is whether the single dad is sitting home on a Saturday night, all like gray and dateless, and, and his daughters come up to him. They they want a new mom. So like, daddy, it's time. You'd make a really nice catch for someone. They give him a box of Just for Men. He dyes his hair, goes out on a successful date. That's all cute and everything. What I like to see is is a similar product called Just for Women with a similar commercial. In this commercial, the uh, the single mom is sitting home, dateless and gray. Girls come up, give her the box of Just for Women. But instead of coloring her hair with this product, she puts it in their food and they die from internal bleeding. Now, how is this relevant, you ask? Well, now she's childless and therefore dateable once again, just like the guy. You see, men and women have similar dating goals, just different roots to getting to the common goal there. I'm showing the roots with my hand gestures here. Uh, it's a good looking crowd. This one is nice one. I'm glad there's not like bright light shining right in my face because when there's an ugly crowd, ugly crowd that actually comes in handy. Uh, there's the other commercial uh, just for men where, where there's a guy with a gray beard in a bar and he's trying to pick up girls and it's not working and the and, and Walt Clyde Frazier and Keith Hernandez are commentating. They're like, uh, rejected, no play for Mr. Gray. He dyes his hair, dyes his beard, goes out, uh, uh, girls start talking to him. But th this is not totally honest because it's actually a two-step process. One, you dye your hair with the Just For Men. Two, you shave off your goddamn beard. <laughs> Who the fuck is going out to a bar trying to pick up pussy with a full bushy beard like fucking Merle Haggard? Merle Haggard? Who the hell's that? Dan Haggerty is who I'm thinking of. <laughs> Grizzly Adams. One of those types. They're all interchangeable. Uh, God, I mean, I, I think his problem is not the color of his beard, it's the fact that he's taking uh, facial hair advice at all from Walt Clyde Frazier and Keith Hernandez. Uh, Keith, Hernandez could, could, Keith Hernandez could pick up uh, uh, Elaine Bennis with that 70s porn, 70s porn mustache. I'm stepping over the word. I'm so drunk last night, I was actually going to open on a whole thing about that. But uh, I might joke about the Yoda actually got like two laughs, so that's... Got to cut my losses there. Uh, yeah, he could pick up Elaine Bass, but that doesn't mean facial hair is going to work for everybody. Let's move on. Uh, baseball. Keith Hernandez. Baseball. This is a good segue here. Baseball fans here? Probably not. Dodgers are doing too well. I'm a Phillies fan. We're, we're in good shape. Uh, thank you. I saw. I went to Dodger Stadium last week. Phillies uh, Dodgers game last Monday. Oh, sad. Sad sight what has happened to this franchise. Nobody's coming to the games. I'm sitting field level. You know, the good tickets to keep away from the Mexicans. And I'm looking... <laughs> It's worth it's worth the extra money. I looked I looked down like four sections towards home plate. There's nobody sitting there. I, I, before like my eyes ran into another guy. See, the stadium's half empty. Uh, biggest like attendance drop year over year of any of the major league baseball teams. It's so bad. I, I heard on ESPN, uh, attendant Dodgers attendance is dropping faster than Brian Stowe after a punch. <laughs> now, now listen. That's ESPN saying this, not me. Okay. Too soon, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the second too soon I've got on that one. Oh, actually, they were both from you. I didn't see you there. Thanks for showing up. In writing and in person. Uh, get ready for the jingle at the end, by the way. Uh, God, I mean, I, I, uh, no, Bryce, he's a Giants fan, and, and, you know, regardless of him getting beaten, he's a Giants fan. That's what I'm going to talk smack about. We all hate the Giants, right? We all hate San Francisco. I'm from Philly. We hate, we hate San Francisco. L.A. hates San Francisco. And I like that. I like when, like, you know, rivals can, East Coast, West Coast, can kind of put their 
different petty differences aside and unite against a common enemy, especially one, you know, such a, a, an elite, uh, elitist, uh, vile culture with such a disproportionate influence on, uh, on uh, medicine, no, not medicine, on entertainment, politics, business, uh, finance. Uh, but enough about the world's universal hatred of the Jews. Let's get back to talking about San Francisco. <laughs> Sorry for going off on that tangent there. That was kind of random, wasn't it? Uh, that's actually got that. That's actually got laughs at the pig and whistle of all places. God damn it! I'm still learning this crowd here. Uh, thank you. Thank you, DJ PM. Uh, God. Hey, Esther's my friend now. I've never actually talked to her. I'm mean, my Facebook friend. Oh, that was totally inside, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, talk to the crowd. Forget you guys. Forget you guys are here. Oh, thank you, thank you. God damn it, thank you. Uh, should I finish on this one? Oh, uh, no, no, that's too harsh. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Roger Ebert. No, let's talk about it. Uh, I have some nasty. I've been doing Roger Ebert bits and Gabrielle Giffords. Those maybe go over the line. Gabrielle Giffords looks kind of funny with her short hair now, but that, obviously that's not her fault. Um, but I will tear into girls who cut their hair down really, really short. Not as short as you did, but really, really short, like to make themselves like ugly and undateable. Because dating is tough as it is, and all that does is reduces the, the, the population of dateable girls by one. And, and the, the reason they get away with it is because the hair grows back. And I really wish, you know, they would, I think they would be dissuaded from doing it if they had a bare permanent marker of their horrible mistake. You know, like, uh, wow, this is getting nothing to through. Ooh. <laughs> I just wanted to join in on the silence. Uh, yeah, I wish there was a permanent mark. Well, like other unnatural uh, acts against nature that girls commit, you know, like uh, like getting a tattoo or having a mixed race baby. I really think they'd be more hesitant to defile themselves if they had to bear the scarlet A. Yes, I got a hey and then dead silence again. This was actually awesome. <laughs> 50 people here and about three left. That's pretty cool. No, I had a good time. ChrisPucho.com. You guys have been great. Thank you. Chris Pucho. Keep it going for you guys. He doesn't like pictures with short hair. You know?